Hey guys, Paperbird here. In my last video, someone had left a comment asking about The Runaway Soul by Harold Brodke. And I thought it'd be awesome to talk about Brodke a little bit here in general. If you've never read him, I'd actually recommend reading his last novel first as kind of like an appetizer. And then going through his two short story collections, some essays in this collection, especially the ones about Woody Allen and this recollection about the poet Frank O'Hara and then reading The Runaway Soul and then his final memoir about his dying. Harold Brodke was born in 1930 and adopted at the age of two by some relatives who tried really hard to lead this attractive middle-class life but they were super dysfunctional underneath and he became sort of like this receptacle of all that dysfunction. He was just surrounded by death at an early age. His adoptive father who sexually molested him dying when Brocky was around 16. His adoptive mother dying a couple years later from cancer. This family was the crucible through which a lifelong rage built up inside that he just wanted to run away from. He escaped to Harvard at age 17 and fell in with a group of poets and painters, the uh, leader of which was Frank O'Hara. Brocky ended up marrying a Radcliffe girl who was childhood friends with William Maxwell who helped get some of his early stories into the New Yorker. And those stories eventually got collected into this, his first collection, which many people consider to be his best work. And these con this contains some of his light impressionistic stories, which really he could have gone on to make a career out of. But American fiction after Hemingway didn't have time for this weak shit. He did make some attempts in his next collection, but he was just getting ravaged by the competition and his failed marriage and went into sort of homosexual hibernation in order to lose himself in the past to which he could transform and bust out brand new. Brocky's breakthrough story was this one here, which in this paragraph, probably the most important in all of his work, he says he distrusts summaries of any kind and would rather be on his knees in front of the event. So we get like 25 pages of vagina. It's amazing to think that, you know, within the 30 year span between these two short story collections, uh, what he was really working on this whole time was this legendary project, which was rumored to be thousands of pages long and supposedly titled A Party of Animals. And the, these stories are actually more like sliced off appendages of him doing battle with that project and just getting published as like these cries in the dark uh, just to show people that he still existed. That past that he was always trying to run away from, now he just spent endlessly exploring it and constructing this monolithic structure that would crush editors as it was getting passed from house to house and finally appeared in 1991 as The Runaway Soul. This book was super anticipated when it came out and it's uh, essentially the culmination of his search for his identity and his investigations into every single moment of his past, starting impossibly with his birth, going through childhood, adolescence, young adulthood, and all the characters that you've seen before. But you don't have to wait out too far before you realize you're going to need a life preserver in order to survive this thing because you get tossed out on, on these currents and subcurrents of this impossibly sustained language on the surface of a story that you can feel is barely moving forward. It's more like an ocean tide to where a necessary reading tool to have alongside this book is time like a ton of time that you need to have allow pass to where you can dip back into the work over the years and look at it with fresh eyes because you know reading it straight through um i don't know it, it drowned a lot of people when it came out and this is a little bit easier to handle actually reading the uh, second collection is really helps because it makes you more familiar with the characters and his life story which he just rehashes in his novel uh, these are more like character studies almost even though some of them were considered the prime example of short stories to where they won um, O. Henry prizes. Like he won them back to back in 75 and 76. I mean, once you're familiar enough, you can employ this different reading strategy. Read them almost as if they're different novels and then kind of swivel back and forth between them. Then you continue reading the book by not reading it as it lingers inside of you and accompanies you through your own journey through time, which is like this slow march that can be measured up once in a while by looking at this eternal structure that's witnessing the souls of others grow up. Right. You age and corrode over time. You have two kids together. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And what can you do with these desires that are trapped inside of a body that constantly fails you just escape into these daydream worlds to obliterate yourself? <laughs> favorite issues of the magazine because it contained the short story by Tom Jones 
It was after his first collection, but probably even mind, more mind blowing was this, where Brodke announces that he's dying. He'd been dying for years without knowing it, and a lot of these death meditations eventually got collected posthumously in this volume, where you know this contains like some of his most direct writing as. His world is just getting ravaged apart. After the 30-year struggle with The Runaway Soul, he put out a second novel, which only took a year to write. It almost like subconsciously he was racing against time. And this book actually works really well because of that pacing. He also put out another book about Venice and posthumously these two collections, more short stories and some essays. And then it was just silence. You know, I always thought there would be another volume of The Runaway Soul, but apparently that was, that was it. That was his major life work. I remember having dreams of Brachy during that time of his dying and wanting to comfort him somehow, like how he had comforted his parents when they were dying. But I just could do it. I couldn't express myself, you know, just fucking failing as usual. He wrote at the end of This Well Darkness that he still would have chosen death if it meant that he could leave his works behind, knowing full well, even while he was alive, that his work affected pretty much nobody. Yeah.